Hello and welcome to the ACCE Learning Network Hangout. This is Series 4, Episode 4 for 2014. Hello Amanda. Hey Roland. Thank you. And my name is uh, Roland Guesthausen. I'm a teacher from uh, Melbourne, Victoria. Um, and this is a place where we can connect and network with our PLN. And as usual, if you're watching us live, you can post a question to the panel by going to todaysmeet.com forward slash A-C-C-E-L-N or on Twitter or and if you're multitasking, you can use the hashtag A-C-C-E-L-N. I should add, I'm a state councillor of the soon-to-be-launched DLTV. Big launch this uh, Wednesday where we could eat all of the, those funny little fruity things and things that almost call food. Um, it's going to be wonderful. Um, huge big thing that's planned um, and I really appreciate some of the people, even the ones on the panel tonight who've helped with some of the uh, welcome videos, hoping to showcase those on our website. Big day. I'll get it's my card ahead of later. It is exciting, yeah. Almost what exciting. What the acronym stand for? Um, digital TV station? Story. No, it's not DLT. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, DLT space V. Um, but um, I know that um, we had a wonderful um, Scout barbecue, which is almost as big as that launch, where we learned how to uh, make our own uh, muffins. And I taught the Scout something, um, the nutrition in a can called Spam. And it was just a real hit with the uh, public when you sort of cut up the pieces and put them into bits of damper and uh, fry them on the, uh, bar on the, um, on the campfire. Anyway, what a wonderful weekend. Amanda. Delicious. <laughs> I'm, I'm Amanda Rablin, e-learning coordinator in Brisbane, proud QSite member and I'm hopeful to be a presenter at ACEC 2014 this year. Um, and speaking of conferences, we have some wonderful guests on our panel tonight and personally, I'm looking forward to our discussion. So let's meet our lovely panelists alphabetically in order of first name, of course. That would mean the lovely Al Upton. It's your turn first. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Al Upton. I'm the uh, meetup coordinator at um, ACEC 2014, uh, which involves uh, relaxed, formal, fun, learning, sharing, learning for delegates, and also a, uh, a good chunk of uh, student digital leaders, which is quite exciting for our conference. Sounds awesome. I look forward to unpacking that with you a bit more in this session. Um, Bruce. Yeah, hi, Bruce Fuda from Canberra, president of Interact, and I'm not on the organising panel, but I'm here to hopefully find out a little bit more about what's happening. But very involved with ACCE, of course. Of course. <laughs> Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Knight. I'm the marketing coordinator for ACEC 2014, so hopefully all of those lovely emails and messages you've been getting telling you all about the wonderful things that we've got planned, I'm the person sending them to you. Lovely, and thank you for all those messages. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Evening all, I'm Jason Zagami from Cook <laughs> University on the Gold Coast, and I'm the token <laughs> academic. <laughs> One of many <laughs> academics on our panel this evening. Yes. <laughs> Julie. Hi everyone, Julie Lindsay here. I'm just south of the Gold Coast, Ocean Shores. And I'm sorry to say I've never been to an ACCEC conference. Um, not yet. Not yet, but fingers crossed for Adelaide this year. Hoping to uh, present, perhaps. We'll see. And um, yeah, it's great to be here. It's good to be on the panel. Thanks. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at that conference too. <laughs> Tina. Hi, everyone. I'm Tina Fatakis. My Hi, day Tina. job for the primary school and my moonlighting job. Thank you, Tina. Lovely and Trudy. Um, unfortunately, I missed everyone's um, <laughs> previous introductions, but I'll just say hi, everyone. Lovely to see you all and. Um, yeah, I guess just to say I'm President of EdTech SA and the Chair of the conference and I look forward to having a chat to you at today's Hangout. Wonderful. Now just to let you know, Jason did say he was the token academic, so I expect you to also represent academics at this discussion too, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, Jason. We're a team. <laughs> well, you'd popped away. <laughs> 
<laughs> I it's think right, I just got, back. I either got kicked out <laughs> or fell off. I got kicked off too while I was talking. <laughs> Do you want uh, to take two at your intro? I didn't know whether you froze or whether just, it, it, just or said it was just... You've gone, but that's okay. No, look, we'll have plenty of time to discuss. We're, we're really glad because you, know, you guys have been popping in and out um, and I, I reckon it's really important that um, we start off this really deep personal introduction. And, and that's where it all stems, wasn't it? You started with this idea about making your conference personal. That's it. You yes. need to connect with the individuals. And, and it's good so, when the technology works. <laughs> Absolutely. So Trudy, as president of EdTech S um, SA and uh, obviously a key person on the organising committee, what makes ACEC personal and powerful as a PD event for teachers? Um, I think that some background information first is that the theme of the conference, making it personal, had um, a double play. So there was the play on the experience of the delegates, so an attempt to try and create a conference which was a, a good mix, if you like, um, for their formal and informal learning at the actual event and leading up to it through events such as this and post activities, plus also that element of how do we use um, the IT, which is sort of in the theme as capital I, capital T, how do we actually use the technology to personalise the learning experience for our students. So there's the element of the educators at the conference and then them personalising their own learning, but then also thinking about how they can use the technology for personalising students' learning. So that's the element of those two aspects at the conference. Um, I know that Jackie has a wonderful list of points that um, I'll let her kick off with when <laughs> you're ready. Um, but certainly Tina also has some a balance of points for the social activities. So I just really want to say that from a chair point of view that the idea of making the conference personal is really trying to focus on the delegate experience at the event and also thinking about the topic that is discussed at the event for making technology personalised learning for students. Because I guess it's much more So than Amanda, just... back to you. Thank you. <laughs> I was just about to throw to Jackie, but I think Roland um, yeah, wanted to say yeah, I want to unpack that, Trudy, um, because that's that's a very big shift in some of these conferences where they were just um, edutech showcases, where we were trying to read the horizon. Um, it, it seems to be that you've managed to bring it back to what education is about. It's about relationships and people, and you're anchoring the ACCE conference in that experience for teachers. I think it's really important that, um, as you can see, there's a bit of debate going on at the moment, particularly in the media, about what constitutes quality professional learning for teachers. And in particular, I'm very concerned about this view that professional learning only happens and takes place in the classroom. Um, I tend to think about that as navel-gazing, that idea of if you just keep looking at what you've already got, your own skills and knowledge, that somehow it's going to get better. There is that need for not just connecting with the colleagues within your school, but for additional um, input from outside the school. Now that needs to be carefully balanced with what's going on in the classroom and in the school as well. But I'm frightened that there's going to be too much of a swing towards, right, there's no professional learning taking place outside of a school um, and that all teachers are expected to just keep working hard in their four walls or their classroom. I think that's a very retrospective step that we need to be careful of and therefore we need to really make sure at our conference that we are um, trying to connect with teachers to make sure that they are really emphasising that personal networking and making a difference because I know the person I might uh, pick up Amanda to uh, cross the Tina. <laughs> I was just about to say, um, looks like Trudy's computer has decided she needs to take a personal and reflective break from her conversation <laughs> for her learning. <laughs> now we could um, we could jump to Tina or maybe um, Jackie if you wanted to provide a, a little bit more information about where things are at. 
We will get well, to I the social stuff too, I think. <laughs> Same yeah, thing. Yeah, love. Um, <laughs> I guess from my point of view, looking at how Trudy's talking about differentiating and trying to get out there with the different communities, that's sort of where I've been doing a lot of my work as part of my marketing role and in creating those vibrant active communities that we're trying to get going. So we've got a happening Facebook page where we're starting to get some feedback on what exactly we want people to provide us. So, And we've even had some hits tonight just from a question we've put up as a follow-up to our chat tonight looking at how can we make it more personal, what can we do for you where people who want to be contacted tell us. We've already had a suggestion, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear Roland and Al about what we can do with a space bar sort of unconference style thing that I know you two are great planning going on with. Um, so building those PLNs, building that Twitter list, we've got very something to watch out for over the next couple of days is a new Twitter list for all the delegates who've put their Twitter handles into their profiles using that information you've already given us to actually get a list happening where we can all interact, getting that all happening now so you've got people as part of your PLN, go and meet them live at the conference. So that's sort of my role at the moment of getting this interaction happening so that when you get to the conference you've got not necessarily faces that you know but Twitter handles and people you want to get in there and meet and interact with. So there's already a network there waiting for you to help make your learning personal. Mm. Not just the network that you've got already but trying to grow one that will be there not just for the conference but also afterwards, that continual growth rather than just a one-off hit for three days of the conference. I must say the conversations um, on, on Twitter in particular and Facebook um, have been kind of ongoing since the, um, the conference two years ago. So you started that conversation and it's just been ongoing. It's um, had kind of different levels of uh, conversation but it's amazing how quickly it started and how much has actually been prepared um, in order to just pull in that conversation from the last conference and lead it toward the, towards the next mm, one. And I think the webinar that we had recently with the three keynotes was a fantastic example of that of where not only did we have all of our delegates there chatting away but we also had three keynotes just interacting as another person which is exactly what they are but sometimes at some conferences the keynotes are these lofty people who you aren't allowed to interact with. Not so at our conference, our keynotes are part of the personal element. So how will you be weaving the, you've already started obviously um, conversing with the keynotes and sharing their ideas um, through the webinar and through all of the things that you've shared already. Um, when the event is actually occurring, how will the, the keynotes be um, assisting in that personalization of learning. Now I might actually throw this one to Trudy back now Trude. I think I can see you there. Yes um, I am back. Because, excellent. Okay. Do you want to chat about the fantastic idea that we've got happening with how people can actually interact with the keynotes during the conference because you've been in charge of that one with them. So. Well this is something that Al and I have both been working on so Al, do you want to step in here and talk about how we're going to have the keynotes in a similar position to some may recall from ACEC 2010 we had the conversation pit which worked really well um, but Al, do you want to talk about the conversations with keynotes? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, what we're looking at is um, you have your keynote and then um, we really were seeking an opportunity for greater interaction with the delegates and the keynotes, they all want to huddle around them anyway, um, an interaction that goes beyond the back channel, beyond Twitter and uh, so what we're looking at is uh, we've got a meet up space, an informal, relaxed environment uh, where the keynotes can come down and they can have a session with the delegates who choose to be there with any follow up questions and um, uh, what would, during this time We've got a what's called a digital leader thought group, and these are students uh, who are going to be coming in, and they're, they're going to be assessing what's going on, and they're going to actually really analyse of how, how personal is it, how relevant is this conference to them, and if we're going to be really personal about it, you need to look at your job and what we do. It's a, 
And uh, so after the keynote spend some time with the delegates, then in will come these digital leader thought group. And a few of those will have some challenges and spend some time with the keynote as well. And of course, the delegates welcome to stay around. And that way it becomes a, a more conversational, well it is, conversations with the keynotes. So we're very, very excited about it, particularly bringing the students in. And it's um, a fair bit of effort's gone into it, but we all agree it's going to be of great value. I was kind of wondering, um, how do we actually prepare people for in the, the plenary in these conversations um, you can have prior to the keynote? Um, I, I read something on the website, and I'll, I'll just jump to it here, about a, um, a master class. Is that the kind of thing that you're doing, or is that something else? Again, um, the master class being a chance to uh, meet up with the uh, keynotes. Well, that's one of, one of the many examples. Um, of. You go, Gertrude. No, go on, Al. That's fine. What I'm talking about is specifically a session. You might go to a workshop. You might go to a presentation. Or, in fact, your concurrent session, you might choose to go along and spend a bit of time with the keynote. It's a, You're already a delegate there at the conference, and it's not, an, uh, it's not one of the master classes. Now, the one Gee, I was talking about is... So I was just iterating, the one Al is talking about is literally for any delegate who would like to attend while the master classes are something special with limited numbers before the conference. Mm. This one is just open to all delegates who would like to attend and interact with the keynotes. So we've got special events that you can attend with them and we've just got general time built into the general conference session where you can get up close and personal with them. Wow, so there are many different ways can that you actually... Can I jump in here? Yeah, Trudy. Um, yeah, so I think that that's a really good point that Al and Jackie have made, that idea that if you would like to really get up close and personal with a particular keynote such as Kathy Schrock or Alec Kouros, you can book into a masterclass which is an additional um, cost to you which would occur before or during the, the pre-conference event day. Um, and you can get up close and personal with them in depth for a whole day. However, for those people who are attending the conference, um, something that is available to all of them is to still have a conversation with the keynote immediately after they finish their address. Um, so rather than you know, that tedious moment where maybe there's lots of questions and answers that can go on for ages after a, a keynote presentation, um, there will actually be a break and then we'll let our keynote have a short refreshment break and then they'll move into their meetup area which will be in the exhibition area and there'll be some informal um, furniture and set up in there so it's a nice casual environment um, and you'll find that that'll be the opportunity when delegates can talk to the uh, keynotes uh, more closely about particular things they'd like to know more about um, but in particular that what Al was talking about was the students would actually be listening to the keynote address listening to the conversations between delegates and the keynotes and then also offering their perspective about what it is that they're hearing, facilitated by their mentor teachers, I might add, um, about summarising and reflecting on what are some of the key messages that are coming out of the keynote in terms of the theme of personalisation and how does that um, impact on what they think as students because we have to remember that um, they're an element of this personalisation we want their perspective about not just that we're here learning about how to have a personal experience but um, what we're talking about, personalising the experience of students, how does that stack up about what they actually think? Are these messages, are they ringing true for them? I feel like I should say over at the end. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm just wondering, um, how many students are we talking about? At this stage, nothing's Al? set in concrete. At this stage, really what we're looking at, why we're calling it the Digital Leader Thought Group, we're talking about 10 students, um, there's a consultant, we have Mark Sparvel, there's a mentor, uh, Nick Jackson, working very, very closely with these students. And Nick's worked with them before, and about 10 of them, who'll be there for the whole conference. Um, one of 
uh, the leader, if you like, we're not going to use that word, but there will be a, a liaison thought leader and um, that student's role will in fact be to, uh, well, the liaison with Tony Downs for the plenary mm -hmm. and Tony's wonderful. She garners and gathers all of this information and, and she puts it into this uh, very, very accessible um, uh, format and uh, she communicates that to the delegates. But on top, well not but, and on top of that, she will be um, getting information from the student's perspective throughout. So there'll be those ten. In addition to that, we'll have uh, student meetups, and that might be um, a few different schools. This will be between the morning and the afternoon, on the lunch, and where we'll be quite specifically, uh, the students get to show what they have got, what they are truly interested in, what's relevant to them, and um, so they get to share their learning. And um, some of this will be uh, published beforehand, broadcast beforehand, and uh, there are going to be events that are going to be more spontaneous or informal, and we'll make sure we'll use the hashtag, and we'll make sure that um, everybody's aware of what's happening with these events. This including student voices is something I find fascinating, and you do it really well. I've been to um, a couple of conferences in uh, Adelaide, one with Rotary, actually, when I was a student, um, talking about youth in uh, Asia, which somehow got mashed by my South Australian relatives to youth in Asia, and they got really concerned about me and my presentation. But I thought, what I remember from the last conference that I was at, um, you were making uh, use of um, a group of students called the Cisco Kids who were helping with um, setting up Wi-Fi and for a whole swag of educators. That was the first chance that they were connecting at a major function with wireless and engaging directly. They weren't racing off to type up from their handwritten notes. They were able to sort of compose, ask questions, look up, um, verify some sources and share and collaborate. And that was a really exciting time for me. And it was students that helped um, breach that forward. Do you think, Al, that's going to happen, that these digital leaders will begin to take a bit of initiative and maybe guide some teachers through this technology? Well, that would be part of their role, and uh, uh, emphasising that they will be mentored as well, but um, they will have, uh, we're using a, uh, we, we haven't settled on a term yet, but, but like roving journalists, they'll be going out and, and moving amongst the delegates and, and finding out what the uh, delegates are interested in, their feedback, and they'll be putting that into the uh, back channel. They'll also be there too to help. You mentioned about wireless, you mentioned about um, connecting, um, uh, establishing uh, Twitter accounts if they don't already have them. And uh, we've got a doctor's is in a help desk. We've got another desk uh, also run by these students on a, on a regular basis where they will, um, an information desk and a Twitter fountain or visible tweets, no details yet, but in, there will be a way for everybody to know what really is going on, not just in the meetup area, not just for the um, uh, student meetups, not just the student perspective, but really how is this whole, whole com conference coming together and being collectively personal? I'm going to ask the question of all of you, and the question is, Al, where are you, team, with your preparations for this conference, um, and what stage are you at? We are at what I would who, who call... Who are you asking? Sorry. Um, oh, Al and all of us. I've started because, you know, I'm not off, so I'll keep going while I still can. Go, Al. Nature of the beast. Listen, seriously, they have been like, we've like been playing with this idea and toying with that idea and, and getting things together. We really um, connect, connect, and, and I think we're at that stage of, of welcome advancement where you can really, it, you can feel it. It's a good vibe that's happening now where we really are starting to all move together in the same direction, knowing that this is going to be a great conference. And I don't know how it's happening, but I'm seeing in other states people saying, oh, you know, you've got Edutech. Hey, don't forget ACEC. And they, they, they're, they're excited about it. So that's, that's where I'm really at. Advancement. A healthy, healthy, wonderful, exciting advancement. Jackie, where are you at the stage of the conference and the planning? 
Um, I guess my role has been a constant one. The pub publicity and marketing, we just keep plugging away there. But I agree with Al, you can feel the momentum building now. There's a sense of excitement out there that yes, this is really happening. It's 2014 now because most of us who you see here have been working on this since oh, early 2010. So now that we're actually in the year that's at the end of the ACEC, um, there is that, that added excitement that it's just around the corner. There's something big about to happen. So it's really good to see it all building. Speaking so, of marketing timelines, I believe there's an, an important message for people to consider about the next couple of weeks, doing something. Oh yes, absolutely. We want you to do something really big and exciting and commit to yourself. Um, early bird rates finish. We don't want you to be an April fool and miss out. We've timed a lot of our things around very important dates so it's easy to remember. So this one is do not be an April fool. April 1, you have to be paid up if you want an early bird rate. So you'll see lots of our little jesters hat out there with the date on it. So please listen to them and sign up before then so you don't miss out. Despite what people, we've heard some little chat about it being an expensive conference, we feel that there is so much with this one. It is by teachers, for teachers, that we want you there. We want to help build this momentum. Mm. And in, um, in terms of a good PD, it's very respectably priced. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering um, if it, it, it must be like you know when my son received his first um, Lego Mindstorms box, and we've taken it out, and we've agreed to commit ourselves to this construction, and we've we've gone through the manual, and we're assembling all the pieces, and looking for the ones that got lost under the couch, and we're now at the stage where we've got it working. We're just going to invite some friends around to play with it. And is that the stage we're at now where it's much bigger than um, just Adelaide? It's going to be everything that everybody else brings and makes to it that will make it in the success it will be. The presenters, the visitors, the PLNs, the groups. Trudy. Yeah. Um, sorry, I missed that because I was <laughs> busy trying to catch up after I got kicked out again. So, um, Tina, can you fill in, please? I missed the lead up. Okay. Um, and my kids just came home from shopping, so it's just all happening here <laughs> at the moment. Um, and that's why I've been making funny signals. Um, okay, yeah. So just the, the momentum, yes, inviting friends over. Um, it's starting now. People are talking about it. Um, soon we'll have the program and um, we can start. Um, highlighting presenters and some exciting sessions that are coming up. Um, and so the buzz, I think, will continue, especially once we start. Can I mention the social part of it now? Because we're going to be starting to get into the whole connecting, networking, but it's more than that. We've tried to cater for, you know, sometimes you might go to the con a conference and not know many people. So the social committee has been thinking about um, casual dinners that you don't have to register at registration. However, there'll be opportunities during the conference if you wanted to just go to a local cafe, which we would have already chosen um, and you could choose from. Um, we're trying to make a little special deal for delegates to go along and maybe create a little group, a small group to just within walking distance from the convention centre um, to further connect and an opportunity to not only be part of the three days or the four days if, if you go to the the um, pre-conference uh, masterclass to get to know people and, and we're trying to build these times into the conference as well through our, um, our, um, our meet-up space too. So um, we're hoping that it's not only going to be going along to presentations and workshops but finding a, a corner or a little space where you can further like a bit like birds of a feather in an informal kind of way. So um, we're taking all of that into consideration and um, Jackie through um, her clever marketing will be popping things out there in social media being the, the surefire hit that it is, um, we'll be getting the word out. So I think it's going to gather even more momentum. So Would share the link with your friends and retweet the tweets and join in the conversations. Hey, I've just noticed your dinner. It says, yeah. um, here we are, I'll bring the page up here, conference dinner, cocktail. What does a bloke wear for a cocktail? I'm just wondering, is it just a, 
I mean, I've got my my jacket at school with the leather elbows. Do they count? Do not um, just no. uniform. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Roland, <laughs> I suggest you get dressed up in your Star Trek outfit. I reckon oh. that would be great. Um, oh, funky. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> you could be. Look, the whole awesome. thing. The dinner, um, it's really, it's fantastic because it's at the convention centre and at the moment we're putting finishing touches to a few things. Um, now, I don't know about you but every conference I've been to, teachers love to dance. They just love dancing and we've uh, taken that into consideration so we're going to have a non-stop fantastic DJ that will be presenting the entertainment and um, we're still working on this but we're hoping to have a bit of an interactive element. I'm not going to give away too much at the moment but it, it's uh, not quite choose your own keynote but it could be choose your own music and what you want to hear, maybe the first 100 people to respond. You know, it, there's a lot of um, little things that we have got planned that just will constantly keep people guessing or keep people thinking right. But it is the event not to be missed because the day after, I've been there when people have gone, oh, I should have gone. So we're warning you in advance that if you want to be there, you've got to book in because um, it is what it is and obviously we can't have all 400 people or whoever turns up. It's first uh, first in, best dressed. Best dancer. So it's not like we, we bring our USB key of music to play. Um, it'll be something oh, more no surprising. Oh, no way. We've got some fantastic stuff organised. And there could even be prizes on the night. I don't know. It's like the social committee have come up with quite a few interesting things that we might need to run by exec, so I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> Oh, oh, there you good. go. We've got to have I a love the surprise. Cake at the conference dinner. What was that, Jackie? We've got to have a birthday cake at the conference dinner. Oh yes. Whose birthday is it? Oh, I'm just reading. Oh, we can't. That's a surprise. Julie's saying it's her birthday. Oh, Julie, Lindsay. <laughs> Something no one knows. Oh, Julie. Oh. Good party with friends. Okay. So we. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I, that's great. We'll definitely have to have a birthday cake there. How many candles? Where is she? <laughs> Here I am. Sorry, I had my microphone on mute. That's okay. How many candles Happy in birthday. <laughs> Sorry, Happy Julie. Um, that was 29. Cool. There was some discussion in the back channel there about uh, you jumping out of a birthday cake. I couldn't quite work that out. Oh, it's my birthday. Roland, it's my birthday <laughs> on the conference dinner, October the 2nd. It's a very famous date, of course, ah. for uh, particularly people. Oh, actually, I'll give you a hint. I was born the year that Billy Holiday died, so there you go. You can quickly Google that. And you that's look, there you go. Don't look at. Well, we'll have to have something special for you. We'll have to bring you up onto the stage, and we all have to sing Happy Birthday. We we'll have to blow out some candles. Be well, we can talk about that. <laughs> okay. No, no, it's, it's been recorded now. You can't back out. <laughs> There's actually a serious side of the conference too, isn't there, Trudy? Because um, it, it's not just about um, um, teachers dancing and wearing silly party hats and having fun. Um, I know um, there are people who are um, furiously penning away um, papers and uh, um, you know, PhD students who are rewriting their theses to be um, shared at the conference. Um, what I'm kind of curious about is you've also got these um, research and practice webinars. Is that something that uh, you've got woven into the conference there? Um, this is actually a webinar hosted by um, Perhaps whilst... Uh, we don't seem to be having much luck with her no, tonight, do we? No. Okay. Um, would Jackie or Tina like to fill in the research and practice webinar? You want to go, Tina? Because you have uh, a lot. Okay. Um, basically, the um, Principals Australia Institute. Um, Mark Sparvel is a member of our committee. Plus, he's also um, part of the institute. Kindly hosted a webinar for us with our keynotes, um, and that's already happened. However, I think what you've just gone to is their website, um, with people who have been to their keynotes. Uh, their webinar have access to so basically it's a free event they are free events but it's a great space and we um, were hosted on that space 
I think, because I just, yeah, the research in yep, webinar, that one. I think, is another one. Yeah. So we actually just had our webinar through that space. And um, from what we've heard, a lot of people um, came along and um, found it quite um, a, a wonderful experience because Alec and Kathy and Tony were just so approachable. Uh, and then that's that. What that's what that was, Roland. If I'm reading Champion. it, okay. I've dropped a link into the show notes there, and I notice also the keynotes are there. So it's a chance if anybody likes to unpack a little bit of what the keynotes are going to be like, they can uh, jump into the webinar and uh, hear how you've made it personal. Uh, watch the recording. Yeah, yeah. Well, watch the recording. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Now, um, can how's I pick it going up on the, something uh, that I failed to? You're back. <laughs> Go, Trudy. I'm yes, back. Go. Look, I'm like yo yo tonight. I'm back and forth all the time. Up and down, in and out. Anyway, um, I just wanted to take that opportunity, assuming that you didn't mention it. Was there seemed a segue possible to Jason? And um, as someone who would be putting pen to paper from the academic research side, um, perhaps someone's perspective as an academic, not because someone might be listening going, oh, why do we want to know about academics? But the research that they do and how that might actually connect with a classroom pra practice, what's going on at the conference. Because earlier, Jason had, um, sorry, Roland had mentioned that this isn't just a trade show. This is not just a conference where it's about shiny things and um, lots of classroom practice by itself focused on technology. This is actually something about connecting a balance between research and exemplary practice at a national conference level. So I'd like to invite Jason to talk about how maybe the paper he's going to present might actually be attractive to classroom teachers. Well, thanks very much, Trudy. Put you on the spot. Absolutely. But yes, now ACEC is always an opportunity for academics every two years. And I think it's important to note that it is only every two years we get this opportunity to come together um, with the academics and the teachers and ever, all the other leaders in IT education around Australia to gather together and actually have these conversations. But yes, academics like to get together and share um, the research that we've been doing and share that out to teachers and conferences are a really great way of doing that. Um, some of the papers I'm working on, um, I've got one on some research we've been doing around games and how we can deploy games into schools and how that might become the next big ICT that we see impacting upon education. Um, but then I'm involved in a couple of other papers as well, um, one around the digital technologies curriculum as it's um, evolving out and then also another one around BYOD um, technologies and how they're being deployed in schools. So there'll be lots of other academics there as well though. Um, and we all try to get together and share the research that we've been doing at universities out with teachers in the profession. I think Amanda had a question. Can there. I just jump in and say that 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 idea of the the idea of evidence is really important for classroom teachers, particularly with the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers. There's a lot of emphasis on on teachers gathering and reflecting on evidence that uh, students are learning in ways that they believe is taking place. And I think that that's a really important aspect of our conference to connect the classroom with the research so that um, there's that natural synergy, if you like, between um, reflection between the two groups to go, what are we trying to achieve here and how can we help each other? Because classroom teachers are very busy people, um, academics are very busy people and, and this is a real opportunity to have those personal conversations to say, how do they actually connect together um, and how could what I do in my classroom actually be um, strengthened um, in a way that is going to make use of some new research and how can the academic practice actually be strengthened by some of the fabulous stuff that's going on in classrooms. So that's my two cents worth. Evidence is important and I think those two things together with academics and research is, um, and practice is really important. I think it would be exciting too to have the, the student perspective on some of the researchy kind of um, sessions as well. Maybe they would be um, a great choice of making links between 
classroom and research too. Just a thought about adding layers. Oh, teachers are critical enough. I'm not sure we could cope with actual students uh, critiquing the they research. They might be that enthusiastic <laughs> um, about things like um, your um, paper on the use of games and uh, bringing their own devices as well. They might have some great, powerful reflections for teachers and researchers. <laughs> they may indeed. I'm sure they would. Actually, I, I'm just. I'm also interested um, in terms of what uh, action research is presented at this conference. Mm. Is there anything that uh, you know, sort of your your classroom teacher who has been doing some uh, some action based research. Is that something that happens? Um, if I can jump in there, the program committee has been looking through all the different um, presentations, the abstracts that have been presented, and this is and certainly the academic papers because some uh, classroom practitioners are also academics. The thing is that um, I couldn't tell you about specific examples right now, we're working through the abstracts, but um, I've made a note here that that idea of focusing on where the action research is, that would be something really to draw attention to. Jackie, hope you're writing this, mm, this down. I am. The <laughs> idea of drawing attention to that action research, I think, is a good point from Julie. Mm -hmm. Great. What would be great, actually, would be to get the students in a round table situation with some of the researchers and to have a sort of a... Um, a review, a discussion, a, um, like a, a, a almost a smackdown situation where the researchers smack down their ideas and the, st and the students uh, get to uh, uh, give feedback on that. So like a, a pitch and feedback situation might be interesting as well. That's Reality TV, voting, and um, <laughs> sorry, you're, you're off the list. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine the students clicking on the like button on their devices there to sort of up the speaker or to down the speaker, and then. Um, but I, I do wonder: is there is there some scope for that to get some student um, voice, students being able to write material or um, student conferences? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, there's there's good to go. But we we can look right from the beginning. We have been looking at uh, students. Uh, writing on blogs and uh, reflecting on the conference, what it could be, and so they're, they're trying to, they, they will um, get an expectation of what it could be, and then when that, they are there to try to get out to as many presentations, and by the, by the way, possibly even present them um, uh, so that they can actually reflect on those. But I personally have looked into that action research thing, I think, Three others I've written it down. Great idea, thank you, Julie. Really. Uh, but to, uh, uh, yeah, the, the students will be involved more and more, and, and uh, we can find a, a place to bring students in along those terms, I'm sure. See, I, I, I did experiment with trying to get the students to um, put something in, um, like a student voice. They saw me taking photographs of my whiteboard to share on Twitter with my colleagues. I make these elaborate mind maps that I kind of share. Um, I made the comment, well, how would you do it? And they suggested, would you press this button to turn around and you take a selfie. I said, we miss selfie with the mind map in the background. People want to see you. What does he need me for? Everybody does. Look, we'll show you. And they grabbed the camera from me, turned around, and they all went in these like gangster uh, like poses on the whiteboard. Um, and rather scary. But... Um, it's a brave move to do that, to engage them with that dialogue, um, if you can keep it serious and if you can keep it focused down. And I know from the experience, um, some of the texts we've had with um, uh, Nick and yourself and the others, um, this could be a real challenge and a powerful learning experience. Um, do you think that there's some scope towards um, students being able to have their own strand and thread in future conferences, that you might be setting a precedent here that others can pick up on? Oh, I'd love to think so. Yes, well, the, the more we can bring students in, um, the the better, and not as a token. Uh, it's it's not a novelty. It's not because we just happen to teach them, but because that is honestly what we are about, and they're um, they're just cool. I'm sorry, I'm fading. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> Go on, champion, and Bruce. Um, I know that you've got a particular mission um, with uh, programming, and I've been kicking around some ideas about uh, doing something with you there. Um, do you think that uh, computational thinking will be something that we'll be seeing um, in this conference and the kind of um, initiatives that are being put forward with the uh, digital curriculum on the national stage? 
Look, I know there's a whole heap of work happening through ACCE and the various um, state members and associations, and I think as a result of that work, there'll be quite a lot floating around about the time of this conference because there'll be a whole heap of, of work that is, is happening that will be published around then. So there'll definitely be some stimulus for discussion on that front. Uh, either way, I think uh, it's natural that given the, the topic, the, the idea of, of technology being an important thing at the conference, we'll no doubt see a lot of computational thinking come up in presentations and workshop sessions and in a lot of the papers and things that are being presented. So. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an important part of the, the digital tech curriculum, but I think really it's going to become an increasingly important part of, um, of everything that's happening in schools. Uh, I know there's some, some, um, some concerns floating around about where the curriculum is at. Uh, I believe, you know, it's, it's ready for use now and here in the ACT I know schools are already looking at it and aiming for implementation in 2015, so there'll be a lot of excitement on that front. And I was going to ask Jason also, because October is going to be around about the time that Apple traditionally launches its next release or new product. Um, Apple IIs are being flogged around on specials, so obviously they're going to be pushed out. Um, Jason, um, more executive jewellery? Is this the, the, the chance for the, the Apple Watch or the ear, earbud accessory or Bajoran earring? What is it we're going to perhaps see? If you could just gaze in your crystal ball and make a bit of a speculative guess there. Well, even if I knew, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. But um, if I was to make a speculative guess, um, I'd see some sort of. Uh, well, there's certainly the the mobile, the wearable devices are the latest big thing in terms of the watches. But also, we're going to be seeing the Google Glass coming out very soon, and an alternative to that, or an Apple version of something similar to that. Um, that's what I'd like to see, but. It could just be something a little bit more mundane, such as the Apple TV um, or some more advanced um, application of what they've already been producing. So no more executive jewellery. I mean, it was quite exciting when you saw the first USB key hanger in someone's neck and you said, I had to wear one of those. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll have someone come along with Google Glasses on and I'm sure there'll be people drooling over that particular technology. Um, but that's probably the latest thing I think we'll see at the um, conference. So maybe we'd be able to sort of go over a large conference scale thing. We just beam conferences in the back of everybody's retina from the front there and uh, do away with all of the interactive whiteboards. I think it just opens up a whole new opportunity for back channeling. Even the <laughs> presenter can back channel while they present. <laughs> Exciting stuff. And, and Julie, I know that you've got some good international connections, and I'm wondering, um, there's some scope perhaps then for international educators to gain traction at this kind of conference. What sort of things do you think they'll be looking for? Uh, they'll be looking to, I would think, to make connections with Australian educators and to uh, participate in, in uh, an Australian do, I suppose. Uh, and to learn more about what's happening in Australia. I mean, really, that should be the attraction, to come and find out, well, what's happening here? Who are these Australian educators? What are they doing? What are they talking about? And, I, you know, the, the social side of it, of course, is also very attractive. I mean, I know we, we all work hard and we all like to, to dig in and find out new things, but it's also great just to sit and have a chat, have a drink or, you know, a cup of tea, whatever, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, just, uh, as, as has already been said, get to know people on a, a more social level, which then cements future virtual connections as well, because we'll all leave after three days and, and then you can still connect virtually and do uh, collaborations and uh, personal things later on. So I think that's a great attraction for international participants as well. But my question is also, um, have you thought about uh, a virtual component to the conference? Is, is something happening in that respect in terms of video streaming or providing, not, not releasing it now of course because you still want people to register but perhaps in the last month or the last couple of weeks saying well yes we are going to, to video stream certain parts of the conference. Is that something you've, you're thinking about? I would love to answer that and in particular I would say that um, that was one of the very first things that we talked about with great passion for our conference having been to ISTE and seen the potential of how fantastic their keynotes can be presented and shared widely with others. Um, it's top of our wish list 
we're just waiting for someone who might be able to help us financially to make that happen. Um, it's no secret that um, different events that are on attract different sponsors um, and sponsors are getting harder and harder to find. Um, but if you know of any, please let us know and that might actually make that top of our wish list come true. But certainly the virtual recording, we're working at um, budget ways of thinking that through but um, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts on how we might be able to make that happen for low cost or find a sponsor. Uh, Roland has said he's always never. keen to have a 24-hour hangout going around the world, so um, <laughs> maybe we can have a, a Roland-led <laughs> ACD oh, LN hangout. I think that would be pretty fun. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just think that we could crowdsource just funding. Slice and dice through all those time zones and just keep yammering on about um, amazing events and wonderful things because they are happening around. And and it was it was interesting at the uh, Perth conference. Um, uh, when you start to pick up the buzz from the people who are listening in who wouldn't normally go to a conference and they were asking questions um, to field to the keynotes and um, it, it wasn't the same as being there but you certainly got a, a flavour for um, their excitement um, being able to engage with some of the issues and questions um, the things they were kind of favouriting and I'd like to encourage those people actually if you um, were tracking and following the uh, the Perth conference um, come along to the uh, Adelaide one in the flesh and have a look what these are like My only bit of executive jewelry, of course, is going to be a tricorder. Um, I'll be more happy when uh, I can get something I can actually use. Um, I can sort of make do with my um, iPhone app, but it's not quite the same. Well, the, I mean, the tricorder is a great thing to have. It's a great way to, to broadcast the conference, but it could also be done using an iPhone and uh, Ustream. Of course, that's another way to, <laughs> to look at it. But but um, it's it's guaranteeing that reliability of stream. I know is is a challenge, and then uh, so people will, will stay there as an audience, as a virtual audience. One of the things I've enjoyed is that um, when people try to curate these events and they they pick up a thread, it, it's a challenge to sit down. You can grab all the Twitter posts and try and chuck them in a bucket. Bucket. But I think the, the bigger challenge is sometimes to, to pick up a particular thread, and that's where those um, tools like Storify come to play. Um, do you see people being able to use that and being able to pick up some of the threads or being given some scaffolding to um, prepare in advance, perhaps a stream, and to curate a story and then report on that? Certainly, we've talked about student journalists um, and students with um, that might not just be doing text, but also the multimedia aspect of it. So the Storify might actually be a text mm. aspect that it actually comes together, be it an electronic text. Um, so that's something that we can certainly follow up with. I guess one of the things that um, we're currently focused on is getting that program together. We know that mm -hmm. um, the presenters are really anxious to know whether they're coming to the conference as a presenter. Um, and so we're really focused on that formal aspect of the program at the moment and the meetup activities which we would say are the informal aspect with the students and the media and those sorts of things is madly coming together um, probably isn't our top priority right now although Al would definitely think that it was his top priority um, and he's doing a fabulous job with his team so um, yeah we're, we're working on it. <laughs> Champion. And I'm just conscious of time. Um, I know I'd like to wind up in about five minutes, but I thought it was a good opportunity to perhaps um, think about some of the uh, closing thoughts, if we can. Um, the conference itself um, isn't just about the workplace and presentation. It's about these people catching up. Um, I know that um, you don't want to announce all your surprises. It's great to hear that you're still taking on board some of the ideas and, and, and listening rather than just taking a, a standard conference and um, unfolding it and uh, inviting people to come along. So I, I thought it might be good for us to have some thoughts about the um, um, some last minute questions you might want to ask um, our audience or um, some last minute thoughts you'd like to share. Jackie. I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can lead with that one because I guess ours isn't so much what a question we'd like to ask but it's being teachers, it's some homework we'd like to set. 
Um, if people pop over to our Facebook page, which is just ACC 2014 on Facebook, you will find a little section there for you to add your comments as to how you think that we can personalise the conference. How can we make it more personal for you? I hope that you, people who are watching have got the idea tonight that we are listening to what people are saying out there. We want to know how to make it more personal for you. So within, I was amazed to see that within two minutes of me popping it up there just before the hangout tonight, we already had some feedback going about the unconference style of things and we would love some more. If there's something that we haven't mentioned tonight, give us some feedback on it. We want to know. Thank you very much. Um, and perhaps um, Al. I don't know what you want. Um, you a question? <laughs> so, um, look, a bit of a teaser. These these people are going to come along, and um, they're going to uh, be seeking for themselves how to make it personal, but. The teaser side of it is that there will be others there, and I am referring to the students who, who will have a session of their own, and there will be there will be a, a, a panel, a, a challenge, and this is on the the last stage just before Tony Downs plenary, um, and uh, I'm quite excited by it that they're going to ask for those who choose to go along to this session, they're going to ask, well, so how personal was it? And um, we hope to sort of like feed that out there a little bit, so people are um, having that in their mind before they go, and then during the sessions and, and the breaks and, and so on. How personal was it? It's not bad to start thinking about now before you sign up for your early bird registration. Cool. And uh, perhaps uh, Tina. Well, as we've already mentioned, that we're hoping that people can um, connect formally and informally. Um, just if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see happening when even while we're in the conference, um, there will always be someone um, around that you can talk to. The team will be around and we'll be willing to take on any suggestions. But um, we're hoping um, with seriousness we'll have some um, some quiet times or some happy times and some social times um, and yeah we'd love any kind of feedback even if it's through Twitter just using our hashtag um, if it's something that you'd like us to consider we're open to suggestions and we can't make promises but we are willing to listen and um, yeah we, we want this to be the best conference experience for you the delegate it's all Thank about you, you guys and, and Trudy, um, you and I have been kicking around um, some ideas um, following the, um, the DLTV launch um, the video. What was the idea that you had? Um, well, I was inspired by your idea, Roland, as the DLTV little introductory videos. I thought that that was a fabulous little idea. Our ACEC 2014 committee had talked about that and said that that would be one of those things on our wish list. If only we had a really fabulous uh, social coordinator who could assist us. So we appointed you and I would like to <laughs> hand over to you to say, Maybe you'd like to describe how what's happened at DLTV might actually be a model for what you do for ACEC 2014. I think for me... Stunned silence. This conference, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, I think for me this conference is as much about a chance to you know reconnect with my PLN and, and to meet up with those friends. I've got a lot of friends out there, but you, you can chat with them online, it's really special when you get to meet them face to face, um, especially when I was in Perth. Um, these guys um, don't often cross a, <laughs> a huge continent like Australia, but to bump into them and, and they're authentic educators, really nice people. I enjoy that. Um, I get a buzz out of each time I go up to Queensland, catch up with my friends there and I'm now Adelaide. Um, looking forward to coming over. Um, I'd, I'd like to try and maybe record that as a little 15 second message um, and I'd like to invite other teachers around Australia to do the same thing to put together a little greeting, welcome, we could stitch together, make a little video and um, kind of celebrate what we want to get out of this event. It's ours and it's personal and I'm glad that you've taken that approach. Um, 
Amanda. I've been really um, excited listening to tonight's session. Um, I've enjoyed every ACEC that I've been to, right from my first one in 2006 when I presented my first refereed paper and I had no voice because I had a jaw injury <laughs> so I had to crowdsource it. Um, but it's been a, a wonderful kind of connection to so many people that um, have grown to mean so much to me personally and professionally over the years. So I'm, I'm really excited that there's another one coming up this year to go to. It's pretty good. Um, I'm just wondering though, enough about me. Well, actually, it's personal. It must be about me. <laughs> um, if we could just get a few more uh, reflections from our other panellists. Now, if you're on the ACEC organising committee and you feel you've had enough of your reflections to share this evening, feel free to decline. <laughs> we might get um, our other panellists to just share some of their reflections first. So, uh, Bruce, do you have any things that you're looking forward to or reflecting on from our conversation? with regard to ACEC 2014? Well, I suppose for me, I, I'm yet to attend an ACEC, so hopefully 2014 will be my first. Um, yes, I know, shock horror, all of first that. Many. <laughs> but, um, so, no, I think I think it would be a good opportunity to get over there. Um, Adelaide is a great place anyway. I spent uh, a couple of weeks in January over there and that was quite nice. So it would be good to get back and catch up with everyone again. As Roland says, I think the most important part of a lot of these conferences is just getting the opportunity to catch up with people you haven't seen in a while, find out what other things they're doing and um, hear from new educators that you haven't seen before as well. Uh, I think you'll find, Bruce, that we'll be very gentle with you. Um, it is your first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jason, a uh, bit of an ACC veteran, <laughs> what are you looking forward to about the conference this year? Well, having been to quite a few of them now, probably at least six or so, um, over a decade and a, and a bit, um, probably the biggest thing for me is has been getting to revisit all the experts and leaders in ICT education around Australia. But what I'd really like to see is a whole lot of new people coming along as well. Um, mm. Of course, we know that there's so many great people doing things out in schools and in academia and various other places. And I'd really encourage everyone that is coming to bring along two or three friends and really um, introduce them to the community that really is ACEC, where we only really get together once every two years it's like a very long extended um, social media group um, where you only post every two years. But those posts are really engaging and really exciting and the organisers go for to incredible lengths, spending well over two years preparing for this event. So it's a very well polished, um, developed activities and social activities and all the different present presentations and so forth. And it's a really great opportunity that only comes around every two years. So I really encourage everyone to bring along friends. That's Bring your own point. delegate, perhaps. Mm. Absolutely. That's right. I like that approach. And <laughs> Julie? Uh, yeah, well, I think I've heard most about uh, ACEC through my uh, USA colleagues and through ISTE, because I know ISTE have had a, a presence. I know a few years ago there was a delegation came over to the uh, conference in Cairns, and then I know there was quite a few of them over there in Perth two years ago. So, and it has been personal. I mean, they, they've, they've really raved about it. They've said it's a great conference. They've loved it. And uh, I know, Tina, we spoke with this last year, I think, didn't we, about, mm -hmm. about the conference. And just uh, it's uh, something really to put on the calendar in Australia if you're an educator interested in that, that meld of research classroom, IT infused, etc. Uh, I'm excited to, to be going and to see really what it's about and to meet lots of great Australians and other people, of course. Champion. And I might um, just give some of my closing thoughts and I'll throw to Amanda before we close. Um, I'm excited by this. Um, each of the different conferences I've been to has had a different flavour and feel and in a really special way. Um, I remember sort of crossing over Floriard in Canberra, um, um, 
coming back um, with all sorts of coral reef cuts and some of the wonderful um, uh, tropical um, encounters with the uh, Cairns Conference. I remember the um, um, the Melbourne Conference um, with the circus and the themes that we had. Um, I remember also the um, the Perth Conference and some of the wonderful ideas and the people I met up with there. I'm looking forward to Adelaide. Um, I just want to float past the suggestion with uh, with maybe Trudy if we could um, maybe get the schools, the Drones for Schools team. They're our next week's um, speaker for the ACC Learning Network. Maybe I can involve them. We can um, use drones for ferrying some of the messages about and uh, uh, maybe um, opening up the conference. There's all sorts of goofy things I'd like to do. Um, I don't know if they'll all get off the ground, but uh, that one sounds like it could. Certainly, go to the Facebook page and we'd love to hear more, Roland. Uh, thank you. I encourage everybody to do that and uh, support my Drones for Schools idea. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I won't drone I any longer. I don't think he's talking about the students, is he? <laughs> <laughs> it's always, always exciting stuff. Um, and I'll just pass the beautiful Amanda to close for tonight. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I feel like I've kind of already said a few of my reflections but I guess I'm really excited about um, what I think is a diversity of options um, at, at the conference. You've got the student voice perspective, you've got the meetups um, which is the kind of space I love to hang out with but you've also got the academic kind of side of it and the teachers presenting their practice which I love too and then you've got the social aspects so I'm just wondering if I should just uh, store up my sleep beforehand and just mm -hmm. um, you know, try and do everything at once <laughs> uh, or, or if I should just be realistic and um, take some bite-sized chunks of what is really personal to me. No, it's really exciting and, and I'm really looking forward to it. So thanks team for all the work that you've been doing. I'm looking forward to it. Now, as Roland mentioned, we have another ACCE LN broadcast next week, all about drones. Pretty exciting, um, and we'll be posting uh, to our wiki homepage in the coming days. And you can also join our ACCE LN community on Google Plus, and we'll send you a lovely invite to that. In fact, we might even send you an invite, even if you're not part of that group. If you'd like to be on our panel in the future, please let us know, and you can view all of our past Hangout recordings at acceln.wikispaces.com. Don't forget your homework of adding those ideas to the ACEC 2014 Facebook page. Too right. And we look forward to seeing you all there and then. Bye all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.